Hey everyone, what I thought we would do today is do one of the rigid body problems in chapter 18 out of the Hibbler book. So this is 1813, it's a problem number, and here we have the uh, problem statement. So what we've got is we've got this uniform slender rod, it's got a mass of 10 kilograms, it's suspended at rest, that's important to know, when the force of 150 is applied to the end. Now we want to find the angular velocity of the rod when it's rotated 90 degrees clockwise from this position shown. It also tells us the force is always perpendicular to the rod. All right, so let's see how we should get started. Okay, so first of all, we need to recognize that this is a rigid body problem. We're given the mass here. We're told it's a uniform slender rod. So that kind of indicates to us that we need to pay attention to uh, the moment of inertia of this bar. All right, and we're also gonna be rotating this bar so that it's 90 degrees clockwise. So it's gonna end up being in this position right here. All right, now the whole, way, whole time we're moving this way, F is gonna be perpendicular to the bar. All right, so the equation we're gonna use for this problem is going to be a kinetic energy equation um, and we've got rotation about a fixed axis here. So imagine an axis coming out of O right here. So that axis is fixed. We're rotating about that fixed axis. So let's write that down. All right, so it's rotation about a fixed axis at O and the equation for kinetic energy for a situation like this, where we've got rotation about a fixed axis, is gonna be T equals 1 half IO, because we're rotating about the axis at O, times the angular velocity squared. All right, so this is our T equation. It only has rotation in it, all right, because we don't have a translation term here, because we're not translating. Now, we also know that the sum of the work terms going from time one to time two has to equal T2 minus T1. So we're gonna use these two equations to solve our problem. First thing I wanna do is get an equation for T that we can use to find T2 and T1. So let's do that first. So this is our T equation, but I need to know what IO is. So we need to find that. All right, so IO, notice O is up here at the top of the rod. If we look in the book, all right, or your table online, wherever you're going, we want to find a moment of inertia about a point up here. Now, if you look in this one, this is the table in the Hibbler book. It gives us the I equations for these axes shown here, but not one up here at the top. So we're gonna use the one for G, which is one over 12 ML squared. And then we're gonna use the parallel axis theorem to move it up here to O. All right, so we're gonna have one 12 ML squared plus MD squared. And then let's plug in our values. So we got one 12th times 10 for the mass. What do we think length would be? It's gonna be three meters, square that, plus the mass again, which is 10, and then now we need D. So remember what D is in the parallel axis theorem. If I've got G right here, and I've got an axis coming out, let's just put a little dash line to represent that, and I've got the axis coming out of O, I want the distance between those two axes. All right, so in this problem, it's going to be 1.5. And then we square it. All right, so IO then is 30 kilogram meters squared. All right, so now we've got this part done. And that basically gives us our T equation that we can use when we go to this equation. So let's go to this equation next. And... For that equation, we need to figure out which forces produce work. 
So let's look at that. Oops, it's supposed to be an R there. All right, so let's draw a free body diagram. All right, so let's draw it up here when we're at the 90 degree angle. So we're up at this point. I've got my force, F, which is 150. I've got my weight, which is going to be 10 times 9.81. And then we've got a pin at O. So we've got an OY and an OX. So we want to look here and we want to see which one of these forces are going to produce work. All right, so what do we think? And this distance here is 1.5, same as this. All right, so will OX and OY produce work? No, because O does not have a displacement in the direction of those forces, right? O is fixed in place, so there is no work being done by OX or OY. Because for work, there has to be a displacement in the direction or along the same line as the force. So let's write that down. Okay, so now we've got this little thing to go by. Now what about 150? Is there a displacement that's in the same direction as the force? There is, right? Because we already said we're going from here and then we're following this curved path up to here. So F is always perpendicular to the rod. So that means we can find this displacement. Okay, so the force F creates work. So let's look at that one. And let's call this UF. All right, so our equation is going to be the force times the distance travel. So the force would be 150. And then now how are we going to get that displacement? Any ideas? Let's look at this. Right, so that's 90 degrees. 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. And this has to be 3 meters for that radius. So this is like a little quarter circle here. So if you all remember, if you use the arc length formula, you can get this distance here. So this will be the distance traveled. Right, the displacement we had in the direction of F. So we're going to use this equation to get that displacement. All right. So we're going to have 3 times pi over 2 for our displacement. So 3 pi over 2. Units here will be meters, because remember pi over 2 is radians. So that's going to give me 706.86 joules. Okay, next one that's going to do work will be the weight. So let's call this UW. All right, so weight is in the vertical direction, it's going down. And do we have a displacement in the vertical direction? We do, right, because I'm going. Let's look at G. I'm going from here and I'm going up to here. All right, so I have this vertical displacement right here, which is 3 over 2, which is 1.5 meters. Okay, so we're going to have the weight times that distance. So we have 10 times 9.81. That distance is 1.5. And I didn't mention it up here, but we got to check the sign. So will this be positive or negative? It's going to be negative, and it's negative because the displacement is going up, whereas the weight is going down, so they're in different directions. All right, so that's why we get that negative, 147.15 joules. Up here, this one was positive because the displacement was in the same direction as the force. All right, so this is because the displacement is in a different direction.
direction or the direction opposite to weight. All right, so that gives us the negative. And then now that we've got these two values, we're ready to go to this equation right here. So we'll just call it equation one. So we're gonna have 706.86 joules minus 147.15 joules. And then that's gonna equal T2. Well, our equation for T2 is the one half IO omega squared. We found IO to be 30. So we're gonna have one half 30 omega squared minus the initial T. So that'll be one half 30 times omega squared. And this, let's put this as omega two, this is omega one. So omega two is what we're looking for. Omega one was the initial omega. So what should omega one be? Well, that one, if we look up here, says it was at rest initially. So if it's at rest, that means this goes to zero, leaving us with one unknown and this one equation. So omega two can be solved for, which is 6.109, radians per second. And that is our result. All right. So again, this is just a rigid body problem and we're dealing with work energy concepts here. All right. So hopefully that one made sense and you enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time for another example.